While it's not uncommon in the NFL to see a team go from worst to first, while it's not uncommon to see a team go from not being in the playoffs one year to making a deep run the next, maybe make it to the Super Bowl, maybe even occasionally win it, still what the Philadelphia Eagles did last year was pretty remarkable when you look at the grand scheme of things. This was a team that made that big move up the board in 2016 to ultimately get their guy in Carson Wentz, started him his old rookie season, went through some of the ups and downs of him as a rookie. Then you go and you look at this team and they make some moves via trade, it's free a free agency, looking at the draft a little bit, and all of a sudden now you come into 2017 and Carson Wentz is paying off in a big time way. Carson Wentz is an MVP type of candidate only to see him late in the year as you're sitting there and riding high and battling it out for a number one seed and trying to get home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs, he tears his damn ACL in a late season game, which means that you have to go to Nick Foles, you know, former Eagles third round pick Nick Foles, who had been around a little bit and came back, uh, even though it was looking like he was maybe going to go to Liberty University and get his stinking degree. And here comes Nick Foles, and he doesn't look great in the games that he plays in the regular season. But then all of a sudden, playoff time happens, and it's like a light switch went on. And the bigger the stage, the brighter the lights, the better Nick Foles got to where by the time you got to the Super Bowl, I don't care what anybody says, to me, in my opinion, numbers alone don't tell the whole story. He outplayed Tom Brady in every way that mattered. Crazy to think about. And he did. And Nick Foles will always be a Philadelphia sports icon and hero for here in perpetuity. It doesn't matter what happens the rest of the way. And what the Eagles were able to do last year gives hope to fans of teams like me with the Chicago Bears and so many other people that, hey, it could be bad. Hey, it could suck. And all of a sudden, just like that, right head coach, head coaching hire, a couple of good trades, some good free agent moves, find that quarterback that quarterback becomes that dude. You could win a Super Bowl. And the Eagles won a Super Bowl without even having their best quarterback on the field. Just insane to think about. Leaves hope for so many other teams. And is a reminder about what can be good and awesome about the NFL. Whereas you look at the NBA and there is no really such thing as parity. It's a couple of teams and nobody else really matters. In the NFL on any given year, for the most part, almost every single team could potentially matter. Doesn't mean they do, but they could at least. And if they don't, they could at the snap of a finger very, very quickly. What the Eagles did was impressive, and you think about it now, they're in a position where the whole thing has changed, the landscape has changed for them, where they are clearly in win-now mode and might be able to win one again. And all the while, not really losing that much significant in terms of the offseason, in terms of free agents, in terms of this, in terms of that, Primarily being able to keep their core intact for another year. And all the while bringing in guys like Haloti Nada and Michael Bennett. Quality players, you know, towards perhaps the end of their career. But guys that can come in and contribute that you're not expecting to be superstars. Just be able to contribute. And you look at the strength of that team last year for the Philadelphia Eagles. Other than the Super Bowl, that is. The strength of that team was the defensive front four and their ability to get pressure on the quarterback. And now you bring in two guys like Bennett and Nada to add depth, versatility, flexibility to what you do. It's just crazy to think about. The defending Super Bowl champions added strength to strength. That's just nuts. And when you look at a team like the Oakland Raiders give up a third-round pick for the right to cut a Martavis Bryant, the Eagles gave up, what, a fifth-round pick for Michael Bennett? A guy who's been a star and a real difference maker for the Seahawks for many years with championship experience where he doesn't have to be the guy. He's just another cog in the wheel. It's like, oh, wow, the rich get richer. Now, you weren't going to expect a lot out of the Eagles in this year's draft, understandably so, nor was it really going to be that important this year's draft. They got a guy like Dallas Goddard with Selleck retiring. You're looking at him perhaps being the compliment to Zach Ertz. Nothing illegal about having two competent tight ends, just saying. Uh, then maybe you look at a guy like an Avante Maddox that they took in the middle rounds out of Pittsburgh, talking about a guy at the corner position, maybe he can come in and contribute. Uh, I also throw into this year's draft class, technically, even though he was a second-round pick last year, Sidney Jones from Washington. You remember him? He tore his Achilles doing that pro day workout. You know, he hasn't played yet, so you really look at him part of this year's draft class. 
And the hope for them is, is that Sidney Jones can come in and play like the first-round prospect he was heading into the 2017 draft because the Eagles secondary certainly needs it. And you know that based off of what happened in the Super Bowl. When that defensive front line couldn't get pressure, it was a nightmare back there. So contributions from Sidney Jones will most certainly be welcome. When you look at this team on paper, what, what do they have really going for them? Well, assuming he'll come back and be healthy. I know he's not starting week one, but you can't imagine it being much longer. You look at Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is a franchise guy. He is everything I thought he could have been out of North Dakota State and everything I told you he was going to be coming out of North Dakota State. But then you also look at the quarterback position, too, and even if you're concerned about the way Nick Foles looked in the preseason, you have to say that you're confident you can win a lot of games with Carson Wentz, but you have to be confident you can win games with Nick Foles, too, because, Christ's sakes, that's why the Eagles finally won a Super Bowl. It's because of him and how he played when it mattered most. So the Eagles have two quarterbacks that they feel really, truly, fully confident that they can win games with. How many teams in the league really truly have that? Sure, teams will say that. Sure, teams will try to convince themselves of that. They'll want to fool themselves into believing that. But the reality is we know that to not be the case. Most, most teams can't say that. The Philadelphia Eagles actually can. I also look at uh, the offensive skill talent that you have there and the system that you have in place. You've got Zach Ertz, you've got Alshon Jeffrey, you've got Nelson Aguilar, you've got a nice collection of running backs there with the Jai and so forth. You know, this is a team with talent in a variety of places offensively. And then you look at the play calling and the system that they're in under Doug Peterson. The guy knows what the hell he's doing. He puts his quarterbacks in good positions. He understands how to utilize the talent that he has. Those are big-time strengths and big advantages that the Eagles have over most teams in the league. And then, obviously, you look at that defensive front. You know, when you look at what they already have with Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, and you've got other guys in the fold, and you bring in people like Michael Bennett and Haloti. Not a good Christ, give me a break. And that defensive line should be dominant all the time, and if it's not, we've got issues. And if you've got Jason Peters healthy, that offensive line is still a really big strength with Peters and Johnson at the tackle position, and they were able to get by last year without Jason Peters. So imagine if they have him and he can still play. You're solid in the trenches, you've got a franchise quarterback, and you've got... A quite a bit, a good portion at least, of offensive skill talent. This is a really good Eagles team. Where are the concerns? I think it's two things. One is the secondary. That secondary, like I said, got exposed last year in the Super Bowl. They weren't that good after all. And if the players there don't play better, or they don't get guys like Sidney Jones or others to step up their level of play and contribute, then the secondary could still be a potential bugaboo for this team. Um... You can't be perfect. You're going to have concerns on your team no matter how good you are, but secondary is a major concern for them. My other concern for them is simply the championship hangover. The Eagles won a Super Bowl that nobody expected them to win, even before Carson Wentz went down, but especially once he did. Now they're the defending Super Bowl champions. They got success that they weren't expecting. Now what happens when they're expected to succeed? Some teams are able to handle that. Some teams are not. I feel like they have a lot of the right pieces in place to be right back in the fold and right back in the Super Bowl next year. But that NFC is such a dogfight. The NFC is so tough. And it takes so little variance from one year to the next to completely change the outlook for a team. But this is still a really good team. Uh, in terms of things to watch out for on their schedule, uh, you look at October. They host Minnesota. They go to New York to play the Giants. They host Carolina. Uh, they go to Jacksonville. So that's a tough stretch of schedule right there in October. Uh, three of the four teams were playoff teams that they're playing um, in that month from last year. Then you look at November and you've got Dallas at home. Then you go to New Orleans and you host the Giants. A couple of divisional games mixed in there. Having to go to New Orleans can be a really tough place to play. Then you look at Week 15. You look at uh, them having to go to Los Angeles to face the Rams, and who knows what that could be for. That could potentially be for a first-round bye, home field advantage throughout the playoffs. That's another big, significant game. Look, it's really hard in the NFL to have the same level of success from one year to the next. And the odds are overwhelmingly against the Philadelphia Eagles going back to the Super Bowl. But this is still a really good team. 
and they have a lot of key pieces in a lot of places. They are really tough, and I'd be stunned if they didn't win at least 11 games this year, repeat as NFC East champions, and make a little bit of run in the playoffs. And if Wentz is healthy and he recovers, they might still have not played their best football. And that should be scary for everybody to think about right now.